So this week, we are going to talk about a lot of stuff, <laughs> mostly things to do with rotational motion. We're going to talk about torques, equilibrium, rotational motion, and um, uh, conservation of en energy when we think about rotational motion and angular momentum and moment of inertia. A lot of stuff that I usually do in two weeks and we're condensing it into one. So I've thrown out a bunch of stuff. Um, so hopefully we're going to get through this whole section and have a better understanding of how we can apply um, basically similar things that we use to study Newton's second law and motion in one dimension to study rotational motion, motion around a circle, and to study um, forces that are involved in creating circular motion. So far, we've seen that forces can cause acceleration when we're thinking about motion in, in one or two dimensions. But torques can cause a rotational motion or um, an angular acceleration. An angular acceleration is an acceleration around a circle. The ability of a force to cause rotation depends on the magnitude of the force applied, the distance between the pivot point and the point where the force is applied. So when I say pivot point, the pivot point is the axis around which our object will be able to rotate when it's executing rotational motion. And this also depends on the angle at which our force is applied. We've seen that already in a number of situations. So, so here we're looking at a door from above. This door is attached to some pivot point, a hinge. And we see that forces with equal magnitude can have different effects on a swinging door, depending on the distance that those forces are away from our pivot point and the angle at which those forces are applied. Torque is the rotational equivalent of a force. And here we have um, the symbol that I'm going to be using to represent torque is the Greek letter tau, a fancy T. The torque is the product of a force and what we call the perpendicular distance to a pivot point, okay? So, well, and alternatively, we can say that the torque is also the product of the perpendicular component of the force acting at a distance from the pivot point. So our torque can equal the force times the perpendicular distance away from the pivot point that that force is applied, or the torque could equal to our distance times the perpendicular component of the force applied, or we can think about it as the distance between the pivot and where the force is applied times the force times the angle theta. Um, theta is our angle between this, this sort of vector we can draw that goes from the pivot to the force, okay? So here are examples of this, okay? So here we have two hockey sticks. In this one here, we've got a nail through this part of our hockey stick, okay? And we're gonna be applying a force right here. So the torque is gonna be this force times this, what we call the perpendicular distance. The distance between where this pivot point is and where the force is applied has to be perpendicular. So we have to be able to create a 90 degree right here, okay? So that would be an example of the torque. Now over here in this hockey stick, um, maybe you, if I moved my image, maybe you could see it. Uh, we've got the, the pivot point, the nail at the top of the hockey stick this time. And now we're applying a force down here, okay? So we're applying the force and here we have this distance between uh, where the pivot is, the point around which we're rotating and where that force is applied. We want the perpendicular distance so we can draw in a little right angle here, okay? And so um, in that case, this is also our torque, would be this distance times the force applied. And down here, our torque would be this force times this perpendicular distance, okay? So torque also has a particular sign. It can be positive or negative. If a torque causes a counterclockwise rotation opposite the direction of the clock, then the torque is positive, okay? And um, my professor, my physics professor that I took my first physics class with always said, clocks are wrong when you think about torque. So if it is a counterclockwise rotation, then that is a positive torque, okay? 
So here we have, um, here's our pivot point. We're applying the force. We're gonna rotate in this direction. Okay, that is opposite the direction that the hands on a clock move. That's counterclockwise. So this is a positive torque. Now over here, we've got our pivot point up here. We're applying our force. We push on this hockey stick, we're gonna create a clockwise rotation. So that's gonna be a negative torque. And the units for torque are Newton meter. So you're taking a distance and you're multiplying it by a force. So that's gonna be a Newton times meter. There's no other special unit for it other than just Newton meter. So here's another classic example of torque. We've got a really classic, most physics textbook have it. We have a um, screw here and we've got our wrench, okay? So the pivot point is gonna be the center point of our screw. And then we've got our wrench that we're using as um, what we sometimes call the lever arm or the moment arm. Um, but in this graphic here, we're calling it the radial line. This is the line starting at the pivot and it extends through the point where our force is applied. So here's my pivot, here's my distance R between the pivot and where my force is applied. That's the R that we have in our torque equation. Here's my force applied, okay. And then the angle is always the angle between the force and the radial line. So this, what we're calling here, angle phi. So for the torque from this problem, we would have this distance R times this force times this sine of this angle phi here. This angle is always measured from what we call this radial line, this, this line that we can draw starting from the pivot and going through the force. This angle is always measured from the radial line to the direction of the force. And another important component, another important part to think about when we're thinking about torque is that torque is dependent only on this perpendicular component of the force being applied. The parallel component of the applied force does not affect rotation. Okay, so if we look here again at our, um, at our, at our wrench with the, the screw here, okay, here's our distance R, here's our force applied. It's only this component, the perpendicular component to R, that is contributing to the torque. It is not this parallel component that contributes to the force. No parallel component of forces contribute to torque. So if you, you can probably think about it just imagining the situation in real life. If you've got your wrench and you're trying to apply a force on it, the best way you can get that torque, the best way you could start loosening that screw is to apply your force directly perpendicularly to that wrench, okay? And the further out along at the end of the wrench you apply it, the better, the more torque you're gonna get. Um, if you start applying at some angle, you're gonna diminish the amount of torque that you can get, an angle other than 90 degrees. And if you're pulling on the ends of your screwdriver, you're not gonna create any torque at all. If you're pulling on the end of the screwdriver rather than pushing it in any perpendicular direction, you're not going to create any rotational motion, so you're not going to get a torque if you're just pulling parallel uh, on, on, your, um, on your object that you're trying to get to create rotational motion. With all that in mind, this is going to be the question I'm going to ask you for your engagement check. Here we have um, a hinge connected to a door, looking at the top of the door, looking downward, okay? We're going to apply a four forces in different directions here. The forces all have the same magnitudes, but they're applied at different distances away from the pivot point and at different angles. So question A, which force would be the most effective in opening this door? And question B, rank the forces in order from the largest torque produced on the door to the smallest torque produced. When I lived in Colorado, I used to work in a building that had one of these revolving doors. <laughs> um, but these are not very common anymore these days. Uh, we're going to think about a revolving door in this problem and think about twerk. So we have two people that are trying to use a revolving door. The door has a diameter of 2.6 meters. So that would be across from one side to the other is 2.6 meters. The person on the left, this person, <laughs> 
exerts a force of 625 newtons perpendicularly to the door and is applying that force at a distance of 1.2 meters from the center here of the door. While the person on the right is exerting a force here perpendicular to the door of 850 newtons at a distance of 0.8 meters from the center of our door's rotation. Find the net torque on the revolving door. Okay, so I did my crude drawing here of that problem. I've got my revolving door, the person on the left pushing 625 newtons at 1.2 meters from the pivot. Person on the right is exerting a force of 850 newtons at 0.8 meters from the pivot. And we are asked to find the net torque. What is the net torque? And the net torque is just gonna be the sum of torque one plus torque two. But we have to take into account the signs so that we have to take into account the, the counterclockwise and the clockwise torque into this, um, into this question. Okay, so for our person on the, um, the torque, for our person on the left, their torque is gonna be that perpendicular distance from the center of the rotation to the point at which that force is applied, okay? So um, that distance for the person on the left is uh, 1.2 meters times the applied force, 625 newtons. And um, oh gosh, we gotta think about that sign here. So that force, that per person is pushing on that door upward, you know, on the left. And then that creates a rotation around the center of the door that is gonna move um, that's going to move clockwise okay, in the same direction as the hands on the clock. So that is a negative torque. And so that's going to be minus 1.2 meters times 625 newtons. That's minus 750 newton times meter, newton meter. And then for the second torque, the torque on the right, okay, when we apply on that force, we're going to be going um, counterclockwise, opposite the direction that the hands move on the clock. So that's a positive torque. And that's going to be our perpendicular distance from the center of rotation to where that force is applied times that force. And so that's going to be positive. That distance was 0 0.8 meters times the magnitude of that applied force, 850 newtons. So that torque is going to be positive 680 Newton meter, oops, 680 Newton meter, okay? So then we have to add those together. The net torque is gonna to be torque one plus torque two, so it's gonna be minus 750 Newtons plus 680, oh, Newton meter, plus 680 Newton meter. And so then our answer is gonna be minus 70 Newton meter for the net torque. So we've got our person pushing on the left and our person pushing on the right. If we sum those torques together, we find that the net torque is minus 70 newton meters. So what does that mean? So our total rotation for the door is gonna be around in this direction where I'm drawing the green arrow, in the direction that the hands on my clock are gonna move, in the direction uh, that the person pushing on the left with the first force is pointing.